Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. In this small video, I'm going to show you that how you can start thinking about your enumerated type enums to construct models. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Let's say that we're building an application for the airline industry and we're trying to manage different kind of classes, meaning tickets. We have economy class, we have business class, we have first class. So our first option will be to, okay, for economy tickets or economy class, we will create a structure that is going to represent economy class. There we go. And we can actually copy paste the same exact thing for the business class, right? And we can do the same thing for the first class because all of them will have a departure arrival and name. So we can do the same exact thing. At this point, we will realize that, well, the properties looks like they're all being shared. I mean, their functions might be different. If there are any function in the structure, that's fine. But the properties looks like they're being shared. So why not just create a class? Because now we cannot really inherit from the structure. So why not go ahead and create a class called base fare or base ticket, whatever you want to call it, and put these properties over there? Because it looks like all of them are sharing it from the base fare. All of them have the same exact properties. So we will end up using our base fare class. And we will have to change all of these things to be classes and not structured anymore. Classes allows inheritance while structures don't. So that's why we are changing them into classes. Okay. So now we have the base fare. It's saying that the base fare does not even have any initializers. So probably it's a good idea to create initializers. You can see that if we were using structures, it would have been automatically created, but the structures cannot really perform inheritance. Okay, so now we have created an initializer which takes in the departure date, the arrival date, as in, and the name. And everything is looking fine because economy and the first and the business class, they are kind of sharing the same exact three properties, which is departure, arrival, and name. But now we want to upgrade our first class and we want to ask the first class customer that, hey, would you be interested in a meal plan? So we added one field called meal plan. And the same thing for the business class, we started asking the business class people that, hey, do you want a meal? And do you also want the charging ports? Because they're business people, they might be on their laptops and all that stuff. So now we have to make sure that we are adding constructors so that everything gets initialized. So we add some constructors also. And for the business class also, we will add another constructor, which will make sure that everything is initialized correctly. Great. Okay. So you can already see that since our base fare was kind of like the base class, economy, first, and business, now they are a little bit more diverging. I mean, they, they started kind of like the very same with the departure, arrival, and name properties, but now the first class is adding a meal option and the business class is adding a meal option and the charging port. So if we want to check in a customer based on their ticket, we will create a check-in function. Check-in function should accommodate all the different fares that we have economy, first, and the business. So we are going to make sure that we can pass in the ticket and that ticket will be of the base fare. But now the problem is the ticket, since it is base fare, it will only give the properties that are available in base fare. So pretty much economy class would be all good, but you can see that the, since the ticket is base fare, there is no property for the meal, there is no property for the charging port. Now at that point, you might say, well, why not just go ahead and add a property right over here? So the problem with adding a property to the base fare, like the properties like meal, properties like charging port, is that those properties are completely useless for economy. And the charging port 
is completely useless for the first class customers because, well, they don't even get that option, right? So we will be adding these properties just for the sake of adding the properties. We will not be using it if we have the economy fair, which I guess most of the people usually buy economy fair. So that's not really a good solution. So what can we do in this case? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can construct all of this stuff using enums. All right, let's see. So the first thing we need to do when we are constructing these things using enum is, well, we have to create structures. The one that we had before, we have to create structures in a similar way. So I'm going to go ahead and create over here a struct economy. And that economy struct will have the same things. The only the things that actually it requires, which is departure, arrival, and name. Now for the second structure will be for our first class customers, which will have the same exact things plus the meal option, if they want the meal or not, or what kind of meal if they want. So we are kind of like repeating. You can see these properties are now repeated, but we are not really tying up ourselves to go in a particular direction. And finally, business class, which will have all of these options, but it will also have another option for charging ports, which is Boolean. Okay, so now we have these three as structures instead of classes. The other thing that we can do is we can make sure that we have some sort of an enum which can differentiate between each of these different things. And we have fixed amount of fares or classes, economy, first class, and business class. So now we can go ahead and create a ticket enum, or you can call it airfare if you want. And the ticket will be economy. Airfare is also fine, I guess, but it will be economy. So this is a this is our one of the, our cases economy there we go the other one is first class which we will send in first and the final one is business with business okay so now we have defined a ticket which consists of these three cases and the good thing about this is that now i can go ahead and create a function called check in and I can pass in the ticket, which is of type ticket, which is an enum. So I can perform a switch on the ticket. And I can say, well, it can be different cases. See that? So if it's economy case, I will get economy, economy. And I will be 100% sure that I will get all the properties of the economy. So if I go ahead and print it out, economy.name, arrival and departure, I can do whatever I want with that. And I can go ahead and construct other cases. Let's say first class. So I will get something called first class or whatever property or name that you want to give. And I can go ahead and say first class dot. And you can see that first class is also getting the meal option now. And the final case would be for business, which I will get the business class. And when I get the business class, I can go ahead and say over here uh, business dot and i could get charging ports apart from the other stuff that i want so the benefit that we get from using the enum to model our whole structure is that we can pass in the enum as kind of like a parent and then enum uh, we can evaluate different cases economy first class and business class the other benefit that we receive from this is that if in the future we added a new type of a ticket. Uh, I mean, we have already have the business class as first class. Let's say that we have uh, some sort of a class called international for some reason. And then we will have international ticket, which might be some different, you know, I don't know, but it might be a little bit different ticket. Maybe it will allow more luggage option or it will allow all of these things and like, additional luggage or something. I'm not sure. But you can have additional luggage or whatever, additional baggage or something. If you need additional assistance or additional baggage or whatever properties, then you can easily be able to pass those things. 
and then you can perform a different case for it. Let's say international, and we can get international. And we will be 100% sure that we will get all of the properties of international, like additional baggage. All right, so you have learned that how you can use enums in Swift language to model and structure your data structure, your whole app, basically the domain that you're working with. So definitely it requires a lot of practice to, to think in terms of enum. And the part is that is important is that enum is not the answer for every single thing. If you have some classes or if you have um, some sort of a models that that is using the base fare or base class, and you're 100% sure that those subclasses are not going to diverge much or at all, then the subclassing is a much better option than using enums. But if you think that, well, in the future I might change it, I might add a new thing which might have some other properties or other features, then enum might be a better choice. Although you can see that we are repeating a couple of different things but enum might end up being a better choice for you. So you can use enum to structure your data. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my different courses on Udemy. I just published a brand new course on core data. You can see it's right over there. It's a best-selling course on core data. Uh, I also have courses on SIF UI, uh, which you can see right here and MVVM design pattern, SIF UI and MVVM combined framework, Flutter, AR kit. I have a lot of different courses, even machine learning course, as you can see, all right? Now, the best way to get these courses would be to check out the link in the description and you will be able to get the best price. Thank you so much for your continued support and I really hope that you've enjoyed this video.